I like to read financial blogs, especially ones written by authors who seem to understand human behavior as well as markets. Joe Wiggins is an author whose blog I read regularly, and you can find it at www.behavioralinvestment.com. In his recent post, The Curse of Short-Termism, he quotes the great British economist and philosopher John Maynard Keynes, who said, investment based on genuine long-term expectation is so difficult day to day as to be scarcely practicable. What Keynes was saying is that even then in 1936, before the internet, it was almost impossible to keep the mindset of a long-term investor day to day. Last week, the October 5th overnight lead market article on Bloomberg was entitled, The 5% Bond Market Means Pain is Heading Everyone's Way. The authors then proceeded to list how everything from bonds to housing to stocks, private equity and deal making, plus office building debt and pensions were all gonna feel increasing pain, losses, if, in, if interest rates remained high or went even higher. The next morning, the jobs data release was hotter than expected, implying stronger economic growth. And in the good news is bad news world, this meant the Fed would be more likely to raise rates, which means stocks would be more likely to fall. At least that's the short term narrative. But with all this strong storytelling about what will happen next, the broad US stock market bucking the naysayers was actually up over 1% on Friday. So is Bloomberg wrong? Was the journal wrong? Stocks went up and there was a heightened expectation of higher rates on the same day. If you were looking for directions as to how to trade on Thursday and Friday, you could have been confused by the signals and the narratives. Of course, this look at a 36 hour window in the market is in itself a short term narrative that I'm telling you about. And my advice would be to almost never trade on a short term narrative. So why is this so hard to resist the siren call to short termism and rather stay focused on longer term issues? Well, Wiggins writes, technological innovations have been so wonderful for investors and also a behavioral disaster, inflaming our ingrained short term predilections. <laughs> the instant access to news, market returns by the second, stock prices by the fraction of a second, has led many investors to feel and to think and unfortunately behave as if successful investing requires daily action. But overwhelming research says that trying to employ this hyper-tactical approach is much more likely to result in disappointing outcomes compared to a disciplined, long-term, buy-and-hold-the-market approach strategy. You know, those Bloomberg and Wall Street Journal headlines followed the close of a third quarter that was mildly disappointing for most areas of the market. Short-term treasuries are one of the only asset classes to show a positive return. All the major stock market indices retreated by the end of September. But 2023 is still a mostly positive year for globally diversified investors. Through September 30th, international stocks were up over 5%, and U.S. stocks, as measured by the S&P 500, were ahead over 13% at quarter end. The broad U.S. bond market was negative on a total return basis, as market interest rates have risen this year. But for bondholders, many are now holding bonds with yields to maturity at 5% and above, meaning if they hold these bonds to maturity, they will in all likelihood receive a 5% annualized return. Two years ago, bondholders were hoping for around 2% over their holding period. So why all the consternation about the last 90 days? I think because it's happening right now, something called recency bias has a tendency to take over our thinking and our feeling. The third quarter of 2023 for an investor who starts at age 25 and finishes at age 90 was just one quarter out of 260 in their investment time horizon, 38 one hundredths of 1% 1 of an individual's investment lifetime. It's barely a blip on the line of our long-term investment experience, but it's happening right now, and right now can feel inordinately significant way more than one quarter out of 260 should ever feel. It's like looking at something under a magnifying glass and forgetting that the enlarged image is not the thing's actual size. You know, behaving well is something I think about for my grandkids. It's also something I think about for us as investors. I'll close quoting Joe Wiggins again. If we want to enjoy the benefits of long-term investing, we need to find more ways of discussing financial markets without feeling compelled to constantly act. You know, it's okay to read about, to listen and talk about markets on a daily basis if we can avoid the curse of short-termism, if we can do it without creating a narrative that magnifies the present's importance as though it's demanding action. If we can't do that, 
then maybe watching sports, reading books, or going for a walk will be the best long-term investment behavior we can engage in today. You know, thanks for listening today. If you have questions or comments, things you'd like us to address, please get in touch with us at www.fostergrp.com. We'd be happy to hear from you. We record these every couple of weeks. Look forward to seeing you soon.